Hey everyone, I wanted to share with you an interview I did for TYT, The Young Turks. And the reason why I wanted to share it with you is because it is a subject matter that's really near and dear to my heart because it's about animals. And I know for a lot of you out there, a lot of our viewers, you too, uh, feel very strongly when it comes to animals, animal rights and a plant-based diet and how that helps save billions of animals a year, how that helps save the environment. So I was able to do an interview with some awesome guests. Uh, we had Moby, the, the musician, the awesome musician, as well as John Sally, the NBA champion, and the president of Mercy for Animals, Nathan Runkle. And we had some really informative conversation. And so we're gonna show it here on Pop Trigger. We've divided it into three parts because it's a long interview. So the first part is gonna cover uh, the guests, who they are, why they decided to go vegan. And then the second part of the interview, it's, it's hard to watch. It's all about factory farming, animal agriculture, but it's so important to watch because you learn about the suffering and you learn about the impact of climate change. And, and I think it's, you know, ign ignorance is not bliss. So I think it's important to watch that. And then the third part is really heartwarming because we got to go to the Gentle Barn, which is like my favorite organization that helps rescue abused farm animals. So you'll love that. And I think um, one thing that we left out was just like suggestions of of how to transition to go vegetarian and vegan because I used to eat meat and I remember that transition was hard. So, and there's so many great options out there. So hopefully we can have the guests come back on, on Pop Trigger, and we can talk about those suggestions, what you can eat, what you can wear, because there's a lot of great leather alternatives out there. And um, and again, it doesn't have to be extreme. Whether you're, you're adopting a, a few meals a week, it all helps. So I hope you watch it. I hope you enjoy it. Please share your thoughts and enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm Sam Shocker, and welcome to TYT Interviews in Action. This is a new series that will fall under the TYT Interviews umbrella. It's all about activism, so we'll be interviewing activists, we'll be interviewing celebrities who are activists. It'll be informative, and we're gonna give you a ton of resources so you can take action at home. Today's show is all about veganism, factory farming, and how adopting a plant-based lifestyle can help you, can help the planet, and help save billions of animals. So without further ado, we have Nathan Runkle, speaker, <coughs> activist, founder, and executive director of Mercy for Animals. Thank you so much for being here. And then also we have Moby. We all know Moby is the musician, author, photographer, restaurateur, and vegan. Thank you so much for being here, Moby. My pleasure. And we're missing, we're missing John Sally, but he's on his way. We all know uh, John Sally as an activist. He's also an NBA champion. So John, and he's a health and, and wellness advocate. He's, he's incredible. I've been following his career and his advocacy for years. So hopefully at some point we will see, we will see John join us. So the reason why John and Moby and Nathan, you guys are all united is we have the Circle V Festival coming up, which is on October 23rd. It's an incredible vegan food and music festival and it's at the Fonda. People can get tickets at circlev.com. So Nathan, I know it benefits Mercy for Animals. That's right. And I know it celebrates animal rights, all the funds go to animals, but what what led you to create this festival and how did everybody get involved? Yeah, the festival, as you said, it's a celebration of animal rights. It brings together conscious artists like Moby, world-renowned speakers on animal protection, environmental so. protection, health, and the future of food, and includes some really, really incredible vegan vendors. So it's a positive, mainstream, fun way to bring attention to a really important cause, which is animal protection. And so, there's, there's performances, there's speakers. Incredible food, right. yeah, and this is the inaugural event. Uh, it's only gonna grow from here. So cool, and Moby, you, you're performing. This is, this is your only performance this year, right? Yeah, for me it's like, um, I was going to say killing two birds with one stone, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best analogy I, for I, a vegan I, I, festival. Yes. Saving two birds with one swoop. <laughs> yeah, saving, yeah, saving two birds <laughs> with one perch. Uh, yes. Two th one, I hate touring. Like, really? I really just hate Why? touring. Exhausting um, or? I mean, partially it's, it, it's very repetitive. Like yeah. you go on the road and you're in the same hotels. I'm not complaining because no one wants to listen to a middle-aged musician <laughs> complain about touring, but like, same hotels, same venues, same airports. It's just, it's so repetitive. So that's one reason why I don't want to tour anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this Mercy for Animals Circle V Festival, it's my only show. That's crazy. One, to benefit Mercy for Animals, and two, because I just don't ever want to go on tour. Like, to do a real tour, like, ugh, it's just something I never want to do again. And, <laughs> but you have, an, you have a new album coming out, right? On October 14th. And, and that's a really, I was watching your first single and I had a video attached and it, it's, um, mm. it has a, a really important message that is reflective of your advocacy. So when you have this new album, do you think that there will be certain performances that will fall in line with it? I hope not. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and also, I mean, keeping in mind, I'm a 51-year-old musician. It's 2016. Yeah. People aren't, I mean, no one buys records. Most people don't listen to albums. Um, so I put out an album because I love making albums, and I hope through making music and having some sort of public forum, I can draw attention to issues that are important to me. But I certainly don't expect too many people to rush out and buy my album the day it's released. If you know, I'd rather they give money to Mercy for Animals cool. and maybe listen to my record on Spotify. When you when you go and perform at uh, Mercy for Animals and at, at for, for Mercy for Animals at Circle V, rather, um, will you be performing from your new album? These systems are failing. Well, it will be older maybe. music. What do you have? What do you have planned? It'll be like a greatest hit show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems very self-aggrandizing to talk about myself and say greatest hits. Right. But how about some of my more well-known songs? Very cool. And uh, because I'm sure we've all had this experience, like you go to see your favorite band or your favorite musician, not implying that I'm anyone's favorite band or musician. You're but many like, people's favorite musician. Absolutely. Kind You're of, many people's kind of favorite music. musician. <laughs> but uh, like you go to see your favorite band from 20 years ago and they, they get on stage and they say the worst thing that an older musician can ever say. This is a song from our new record. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, oh, I guess that's a chance for me to like check my phone, go to the bathroom. Right, you want to sing the hits along with so them. I might play one or two songs from the new record okay. briefly, but it'll mainly be older songs that people know. That's so exciting for the, the fans that, your fans that will be attending Circle V to, to be able to sing some of those hits with you. And then there's other performances too. I know that Davey Havoc and his new band, right, duo, they will be performing. Black Audio, is that the? Mm -hmm. Black Audio will be performing, which has a lot of electronic influence actually. And then who else do you guys have performing? Cave. Yep, Cold oh, Cave very will also cool. be performing. And yeah. a lot of different speakers, right? We have John speaking, Jane Velez Mitchell. There's a lot of people that will be speaking. Ingrid Newkirk, president just met her. Peta. I just we, met her and she was, she was so sweet. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I wouldn't expect anything less, but yeah. Neil Bernard, founder of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. We have Uma Valetti, who is with Memphis Meats, which is a clean meat company, so cultured meat, growing meat in a lab environment. Um, Miyoko's from Miyoko's uh, vegan cheese line. Um, really, some of the Don't best, brightest. Kat Von D. Kat I Von D. Love Kat. The Kat Von D. Love her. Brilliant. Vegan, yeah. huge animal activist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely adore her. Her makeup, her makeup line too is vegan, and I believe yep. cruelty yes. free. So, totally, totally cruelty free. Yep, yep. She's she's a big supporter of Mercy mm -hmm. for Animals. Leilani Munter, who's a vegan race car driver. So cool. Yeah, just brilliant, brilliant yeah. speakers and incredible and, food. And also, if you've never had him on your show, I highly recommend that you do. Jamie Kilstein. Really? Yes. Do you know yes. Jamie? No, please inform me. He was Robin Williams' favorite comedian, and wow. he's this. That wonderful, says a lot. crazy vegan activist comedian. And so when we're watching Fox News or looking at the Drudge Report and we're boiling inside, yes, all same. of his comedy is informed by that. So he's kind of like our very funny id. Like the stuff that we don't feel we can say in polite company, he says, and it's really fun. We need to get him on the show, Malcolm. Yeah. Did you hear that? Did you take notes? <laughs> yeah, Jamie, okay. Jamie kills <laughs> We're going we're gonna to work on getting him on the yeah. show. He'll be emceeing the event? He'll be emceeing the event. Yeah. This sounds yeah, like so be, much fun. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, so if you're in the Southern California area or if you just want to make the trek, make sure yes. you go to circlev.com, get tickets. Also go to mercyforanimals.org because you will, you will learn so much about how incredible you guys are. I'm so oh, in debt you. to the work that you thank guys you. do for animals. Thank you. And stick around. We have more coming up. Going vegan. At some point in our lives, we all made that choice to go vegan. Unless, unbeknownst to me, one of you <laughs> grew up vegan. You know, some people grew up that way. But so I wanted us to share our personal stories about why we went vegan, at what yeah. point in our lives that was. And also, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there. You know, people may think, what does a vegan look like? What do they act <laughs> like? What do they eat? And some people have a negative connotation um, to, to even the word veganism. Mm. And if, if one of you um, out there, um, if that, if that relates to you, I, I just beg that you watch this whole interview and um, hopefully we will inform you and hopefully by the end of it, it'll change your mind. So, um, okay, so at what point, uh, Nathan, because I know at 25, first of all, at 25 years old, Nathan is the youngest person to be inducted into the Animal Rights Hall of Fame. That's amazing. So I feel like that you've been at this for a long time, but at what point did you decide to make those choices to become yeah. vegan? So I was born on a small farm in Ohio. So quite the opposite of being raised vegan come from four generations of crop farmers. Both of my uncles were hunters, trappers, fishermen. So I grew up in an environment where it was the norm to use animals for humans. Uh, 
When I was 11 years old, though, I learned about factory farming, and I decided that I didn't want to pay someone to abuse animals on my behalf. And like most people, I grew up with dogs and cats who I considered to be members of our family. Um, and I would see my uncles hunting, trapping, skinning animals alive, scaling fish alive, ripping animals' heads off of their still alive. And it always felt wrong to me as a young child. Um, but no one in my community validated that all animals deserve our respect and consideration, not just our dogs and cats. So when I learned about factory farming, I went vegetarian. This was at 11 years old. Um, and then when I was 15, there was an animal abuse case at our local high school. Um, mm. So there was a Future Farmers of America class, and the teacher of that class was a pig farmer. So it came to the point in the curriculum where they were to do a dissection project. And the teacher decided that he was going to kill baby piglets on his farm to bring to the school for this dissection project. Now, this morning he arrived, but one of the piglets was still alive. Oh my God. And was standing on top of the other piglets in this bucket. A student in the class took this piglet by her hind legs and slammed her what? head first into the ground. Um, this piglet still didn't die. She had a fractured skull. She was bleeding out of the mouth in horrible distress. Other students grabbed this dying piglet, left the classroom, went to another teacher who was known as the vegetarian who cared about animals. She went to the local vet and had this piglet euthanized. And then she went to the sheriff and filed an animal cruelty complaint. And animal cruelty charges were filed. Uh, it went to court. And the very first day of that trial, those cruelty charges were dismissed because it's considered standard agricultural practice to slam baby piglets head first into the ground. Wow. It's called thumping. It's an inexpensive way of killing piglets, but as this case illustrated, it can cause prolonged, horrible, horrible suffering. And clearly if this had been a puppy that was slammed head first into the ground, right. the cruelty prosecution, psychiatric evaluation, you know, a ban of ever working with animals again would have happened. So Possibly this, losing his job as a teacher. It, absolutely. Yep. So this was 17 years ago, and it was that case that um, compelled me to start Mercy for Animals in this small farming community. Wow. Incredible. Wow, yeah. that's, a, that's a really tough hmm. story to listen to, but it impacts you. Uh, Moby, at what age did you decide to become vegan, or was it vegetarian at first? Well, I've been a vegan now for 29 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, like most people, I grew up in that sort of strange paradox of loving animals and eating animals. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in suburban Connecticut and we had lots of rescue dogs and cats and iguanas and I loved them unconditionally, but I also loved Burger King and McDonald's and I never really thought about it. And then I had this, what I think of my like Saul on the road to Damascus epiphany, I was petting a rescue cat of mine named Tucker. And Tucker was the sweetest cat you've ever met, like with this incredibly rich emotional life. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized, Tucker, my, the love of my life, this cat has two eyes and a central nervous system and a profoundly rich emotional life and a desire to avoid pain and suffering. And a little switch got thrown in my head and I realized, oh, Every creature with two eyes and a central nervous system has a rich emotional life and a desire to avoid pain and suffering. And that was in 1984, 85. Wow. So I became a vegetarian then, and then soon after became a vegan. So the core of my veganism is a love for animals and a simple belief that animals are not property. You know, mm -hmm. like every animal has its own life, its own rights, its own will. But then as time has passed, my veganism and my activism has been informed by climate change. Mm -hmm. I mean, up to 50% of climate change comes from animal agriculture. Mm -hmm. Famine, 100% of famine comes from animal agriculture. And if you're interested as to why that's the case, I'm happy to explain more. Mm -hmm. um, rainforest deforestation, 75%. Mm -hmm. Antibiotic resistance, 75%. So like, as progressives, we look at our progressive basket of issues and we realize animal agriculture in, informs and touches almost all of them. So yeah, so at the core of it, it's a love of animals, but it's also very much in service of all my other like progressive ideas. Exactly, and I think yeah. it kind of fell in line with me too. That for me, it was about 13 years ago I went vegetarian, and 
for me, it was at the end of high school, beginning college, and uh, I was actually inspired by a lot of the musicians I looked up to. Mm -hmm. You were one of them, as well as Ian MacKay for Minor Threat. He was mm -hmm. vegetarian. Davey Havoc was one of them, Joan Jett. And so for me, um, that's why I think it's so important that um, that we have these activists that have a big platform because they do they do influence people. So I would Absolutely. go to different music festivals and PETA mm -hmm. too would be there and they'd be passing out pamphlets. And I was unaware because I loved animals, but I also ate meat. I loved mm -hmm. meat. So I wasn't aware of like the harsh realities that were happening within fa factory farming. And I would yeah. read these sobering statistics and I was like, whoa, which led me to watch some of the footage. And later mm -hmm. um, we're gonna actually watch some footage, but it's so important to have that because some of us are, are, are completely clueless yeah. of the suffering and, um, and not only how it impacts, how factory farming impacts the animals, but as you said, Moby, the environment. Mm -hmm. So like the single best thing that you can do to help the environment and help animals and your health is to adopt a plant-based diet. And I was mm -hmm. able to learn all that, thank God, um, you know, 13 years ago. And then it took me about a year to become vegan. It took me a year to start to decide, okay, how do I eliminate dairy and how do I, and then where do you guys draw the line? So for me, then I was like, oh, I I started to look at my household uh, products. I said, okay, that's tested on animals, or there's an animal byproduct there, and I had to clean house there. Same with like cosmetics. And uh, for you at home, there's a there's a fantastic website called leapingbunny.org, and it will show you all the different products out there that are cruelty free, and, and they're great products. Products that you probably already use, products that are available at CVS or Sephora or Rite Aid. So, um, but at what point did you guys have to like draw the line, and at what point do you decide um, you know, I guess like baseball mitts, you know, they're yeah. made out of leather, <laughs> footballs. So, so where do you draw that line? I think it's important to understand that veganism is a tool to prevent animal cruelty. Uh, for me, it's not about purity. Um, and for people that are thinking about going vegan, they should lean into it. They should be patient with themselves. They should start crowding out the meat, dairy, and eggs with plant-based alternatives. Um, you know, if, if everyone went meatless just on Monday, for example, over a billion animals would be spared wow. the horrors of factory farming in the United States every year. Wow. So just once a year. That's a really powerful yeah, statistic. A billion animals a year if okay. people just went meatless, meatless Mondays, on Monday. Meatless Mondays. Yeah. So I think some people hear about veganism and they say, I could never do this. Right. Well, start on Monday, then add Tuesday, you know, ease into it. And what I have seen is that most people, they feel better, not only physically, but they also feel better knowing that they're not supporting horrible animal abuse, the degradation of the environment. Um, so yeah, ease into it. People can go to chooseveg.com. We have a website where they can get a, a vegetarian Fantastic. starter guide. Fantastic. There are so many resources out there. And also, as far as where we draw the line, um, I mean, as we all know, especially in the world of progressive politics and progressive movements, we're sometimes guilty of being in like a holier than thou circular mm. firing squad, uh, you know, where suddenly like you're criticizing people with whom you agree. Right. You know, I mean, we saw it with like Bernie and Hillary, you know, like Bernie supporters saying, but Hillary voted for the war. I was like, have you looked at the opposition? Right. Have you looked at the Republicans? Like, right. we don't have the luxury of infighting. You know, infighting to me is just like a product of like a, dimin like a diminished worldview and ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know, and the same thing with the world of veganism. Like, if I see a vegan, who happens to be wearing leather shoes, mm -hmm. you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not great, but compare that to like CAFOs and factory farms and animal abuse and the subsidies that go to animal agriculture. Like we have a job and it's not criticizing each other. I agree. Yeah. And what about some of like the social impact, meaning um, when you guys first decided to become vegan or even now, do you find that certain people will will judge you? How are your have your friends and family mm -hmm. been supportive? Your fans been supportive? Well, I, I mean, like, I've been a vegan now for 29 years. So when I first became vegan, no one even knew how to pronounce vegan. They're like, <laughs> is it vegan? Is it vegan? And it was pretty obscure and it's been incredibly heartening to see the growth of the vegan movement. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Bill Clinton is primarily vegan. Mm -hmm. Al Gore is primarily mm -hmm. vegan. Oprah is primarily vegan. Like, like 29 years ago, m me and the Phoenixes, as far <laughs> as I know, like and Gene Bauer from <laughs> right. Farm Sanctuary, like they're just, veganism really wasn't right. a thing. So it's right. been really encouraging Absolutely. to see the growth. In fact, um, uh, later today, I'm having dinner with Cory Booker, mm -hmm. our vegan senator mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's that 
the famous Martin Luther King Jr. quote of, you know, the moral arc of the universe is mm -hmm. long and it bends towards justice. You quoted that yeah. at the Mercy for Animals gal Gala. And I think it bends towards justice, but it also bends towards progress and reason. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you look at human history from the Magna Carta on, like there's this steady extension of rights to more and more people and more and more creatures. Yeah. And I just see that rationally continuing. Right. You know, we're like, in the future, people will look back and say, like, what? Like, you tortured and killed animals, which tortured and killed the animals, but also compromised the environment and decimated human health. Like, simply just saying, like, what the fuck were you doing? Right, like, such a disconnect, yeah. such a disconnect. Yeah. Um, we have to move on, but quickly, uh, what are some of the, the links that we can give? So we have the one that you yep. mentioned. Chooseveg.com. Chooseveg.com, mercyforanimals.org, has yep. a lot of great resources. Uh, Moby, any advice that you could give to viewers at home who are considering adopting even just a, a little it, bit of a plant-based diet? Um, I guess it's the famous Voltaire quote that Obama paraphrased in his first inaugural address, which is, don't let the perfect be the enemy mm -hmm. of the good. Absolutely. You know, like say, doing 10 good things is great, you know, and you have to start somewhere. Yes, we're yeah. gonna leave it on that note.